Um, and uh, my neighbor gave me a great compliment 10 years ago. It was a Saturday in June, and I was mowing my lawn. And another neighbor drove by, and she slowed down her car and pulled up to the bottom of my driveway and rolled her window down and shouted from her car in the way that people shout from their cars, How are you? I shouted back, Great. She continued, Well, you look amazing. I said, Thanks. And I turned my mower off at this point because it was clear she had something she wanted to say. And she asked me, the same question that she had asked me many, many, many times before. How long has it been? Five years, I said. And she shook her head and humbled awe. And she said, that's incredible. You are such a survivor, you. Yep, yes, so today, <laughs> knock wood. And I yanked the cord on my Murray as hard as I could, and I got back to my lawn. She honked her horn and waved and gave me a thumbs up, and she drove off. And I knew that she felt sorry for me, which pissed me off. <laughs> I knew when I trimmed out the junipers down by the top of the driveway that she was probably at the stop and shop at that very minute, patting herself on the back for buying that free pink ribbon you'll play. <laughs> I knew when I accidentally mowed over the little hydrangea <laughs> that she was so glad that she was not me. And I knew when I stepped in the giant pile of poop from the Great Dane from next door. <laughs> That she thought that I had to mow my own lawn because I had no man, because I had one breast. And even if I found a man to whom that was not an important factor, which was highly unlikely, I was a sketchy proposition after all, five years or not, but you go, girl, you big survivor, you! I got my snow towel, and I scraped up the rest of the poop, the landmine of poop. <laughs> And I walked next door, and I dumped it in Suzanne's driveway by the mailbox, like I always do. <laughs> now, for context, you need to know that Suzanne is one of those multiple pet-owning vegetarians. <laughs> she has this great day named Grace, never on a leash who left the poop in my yard. She also kept a flock of geese in her backyard, some ducks. She had several blind cockatiels that she took for walks around the neighborhood in a baby carriage. <laughs> a few parakeets. She used to have chickens, but Grace ate them. <laughs> Suzanne has a little business where she makes turtlenecks for parrots <laughs> out of gym socks. <laughs> and she 
she says, you fat ass cancer bitch. <laughs> For the record, I did not have a fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> and although I was born in the month of July, I'm fairly certain she was not referring to my astrologers. <laughs> <laughs> fat ass cancer bitch. <sighs> a crazy thing to say to someone who has just dumped a pile of your dog's food in your driveway. Not knowing what else to do, I left. Suzanne's face contorted, despite the Botox. <laughs> I got very close to her face, and I told her she needed to up her meds, she needed to keep that goddamn dog on a goddamn leash, and she owed me another pair of running shoes. And with as much dignity as I could muster, I took my poop-smeared snow shovel, and I turned, and I walked home, <laughs> where I cried. Fat oh. ass cancer bitch. I told my 11-year-old daughter, Marty, you'll never believe what Suzanne just called me. I walked across the street, and I, I told my neighbor, Jane, Jane, you'll never believe what Suzanne just called me. She said I was a fat ass cancer bitch. And Jane said, that is bullshit, Christine. You don't have a fat ass. <laughs>
And from then on, we, we waved when we saw each other on the street. We'd chat, and she was walking those cockatiels in the baby carriage. <laughs> Did you know that some pet shop owners blind cockatiels so they don't fly away? <gasps> Suzanne is sort of a rescue for these. She, she finds them through an agency. She's like a foster mom to these cockatiels. <laughs> and those little sweaters that she makes for the parrots are so they will not pluck out their chest feathers because exotic birds in captivity experience great trauma and anxiety. Suzanne would, would call um, when there was a power outage to offer us use of her generator that she has to keep her menagerie warm. We would exchange Christmas presents. We became Facebook friends. She commented on, on one of my pages when I was promoting one of my shows for the FACB. She wrote in a comment, I love it when something bad turns into something good. <laughs> I watched her walk Grace on a leash. I watched them over the years. They got slower and slower as Grace got older and older. She was a huge dog and her hips gave out. Eventually they stopped walking altogether and I began to notice that Suzanne was hauling lots of garbage bags every week to the dump. And I learned that Grace was incontinent and that Suzanne had her in diapers for over a year. Four years ago on Christmas Eve, Grace stopped. We found out on Facebook, um, Suzanne posted that, and uh, I ran out to stop and shop right before they closed, and I managed to cobble together a bouquet of flowers, and I ran back home, and we all signed the card, and then I walked next door, and I knocked on her front door, and I hugged her in her living room, and I said I was so sorry. So ten years later, Grace is gone, Suzanne has cats now. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> I am the fat ass cancer bitch. I do indeed have a fat ass. It's no longer a joke. <laughs> sort of a self fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> um, Suzanne and I are friends. That dog lived to be 14 years old, which is sort of a crazy age for any great game to attain but it was because of her owner. A very kind and good woman who's also my neighbor. Aww. Aww.